Uh, what's up, guys? My name is like, Fist here today. I know it's probably an inconvenient time for you to be seeing this, but yes, I'm out here at 3, 4, 5, 4, 5, 43, 543, doing a video for you guys. You know, I want to get out here at some brainstorming ideals. Uh, now, I've been looking back at my original videos, like Scoliosis, Kyphosis, Slimitations, Vascularity of the Truth. So I've been wanting to redo all of them so I get I get the best content that you possibly have available to you guys to use to fill it, to further your knowledge about the science of the body and everything that I cover here. So I think today we're gonna to be talking about scoliosis. So of course we're to start with the origin of scoliosis. What is scoliosis and what does it have to do with? Scoliosis is a twenty degree angle back as we know it. Now Kyphos is a 45 degree angle back of Evans No, it's like a hunchback, but so take it like this. Scoliosis is like a snake, it's like it, it's slithering. So scoliosis is like a, a snake. So it, it starts with the curvature of the lumbar vertebrae and then it, it leads on to narrowing narrowing of the thoracic and cervical vertebrae. It's, it's something I, I don't have it personally. My friend has that school. He says it makes it a living hell to try to do stuff. He does stuff that just doesn't put much pressure on his back. But the, the major thing is that what, what it makes you do scoliosis is that it makes you this really... So you know anatomic posture? The standard posture that we all have. So the standard posture that, that you just do like that. It's like, but it's even farther back. It's even farther unbalanced. The coordination between... The core and the quads and the legs, the hamstrings. Going for the uh, the posterior and the anterior chain that we're going to be talking about. The posterior leads more into the back, leads more into the core. The chest leads more into the core because the core is involved with the ter the teres major, teres minor, uh, along with the the, uh, the terospinals, but not even just that with the lats. With the obliques, rectus abdominis, transversus ab abdominis, abs, the linear elbow that separates the rectus abdominis and the transverse abdominis. So we have all of that in the core anatomy. It goes with the back and it goes with it goes with the chest too, as we know. But I'm gonna get a lighter a lighter view for you guys. So it's scoliosis. Is this something hard to live with? Yes, it's hard to live with. Some people, it's usually scoliosis rather than kyphosis because kyphosis is not temporary, it's permanent. So if you get kyphosis, kyphosis, it's a hunchback. So, I mean, you're going like that and you really cannot move it. I mean, you can try, but it's not because it's not going to want to move out of that impacted area. And what, what I mean by that, that closing area, when, when it narrows, the thoracic and cervical vertebrae, when it narrows, it, it's really bad. So, let's go back. So the lumbar vertebrae, the curvature is created like a, like a spider slithering up. So the, the spider is slithering up. Anything about this, it, it just narrows. And it's not going straight. So it's not going how it's supposed to be. It's going to be deformed rather than, it's going to be abnormal rather than normal how it's supposed to be. So we can have a, a good anatomic posture. Anyways, 3 minutes and 51 seconds in this video. So it's a, it's a standard posture, and what, what I want you to focus on is stop putting all the pressure on your back, because that causes even more problems for your cervical and thoracic vertebrae, lumbar, for there. But I want you to stop putting tension. Isometric. isometric what does iso isometric mean? It basically means adding tension without muscle contraction. And it's really good, but. Other, other than that, in the scolios, scoliosis video, the thing that we're going to try to avoid is uh, bulging disc, herniated disc, protruding disc. Now, bulging is is when it's literally bulging. It's falling out of the sciatic nerve so socket. The disc is falling out of there. Protruding is when it's, it's out of place. It's about to fall out of there. Bulging is more see-through and protruding is more coming out is more out of place if you want to say herniated disc is just when it, it's fully out 
a herniated disc, and usually a hernia happens. The status happens too, but I'm not gonna get much into herniations today, hernias today. We're just gonna be covering this and all this stuff. So the thing about scoliosis is you, you have to fix your posture because you can't just let your spine stay in that if you don't if you don't get a good posture. So you want a interior posture facing more your, more your chest rather than just just. So if we were to get not to, not into interior posture because interior posture is more your chest and lean that way but again from from this point of view I mean getting like pull leaning towards your back now what is it was really bad it's most important to get into posterior posture and most people get into anterior posture and this this is this is really bad especially if you're trying to realign if you're trying to straighten your thoracic your thoracic and cervical vertebrae because it's not gonna happen but the thing that we do is you wanna so and I'll have some demonstrations in this like I did I covered it on my Google site Google website Brian Sacred Fitness so I mean if I can I can perform perform it a little bit so I just look at that bulging and all that the, the science of the body the iliocostalsis the longissimus the Spinosis. Now I'm going to be further explaining this because we're not going to be ending this video there. Because there's, there's a lot, lot of more stuff to cover in this video. So scoliosis, it's not as bad as kyphosis. It's not as bad as kyphosis, just to let you guys know. Kyphosis is you can't do anything with it. You can't adjust your spine because it's too far gone. It's too far enclosed and you can't straighten it out anymore. But the thing you want to do is that you want to get your shoulder blades so, so that less contracted and the less pressure with more tension so you separate them so the thing about that shoulder blades is to make sure that now even if postural impingements happen now they're when your your shoulder blades pop out of order so you'll make sure that you just straighten them you'll make sure that make it so that they do not contract you want to make sure that they protract instead of contracting and it's major that the the you're doing something, you're taking action for the thoracic and cervical vertebrae. You're trying to do something to help strengthen it and make it so that it more it wants to realign and it wants to heal and it wants to straighten up so you have good posture, not anatomic posture, because anatomic posture is standard posture and it's usually rolling around or whatever. I mean, it's a video I covered when I was first in YouTube, when I first made my YouTube account, so I want to make sure I covered it to you guys today. This is not the video, so as a stress, even when doing a squat, you want to make sure that you want to make sure that you're in posterior posture, not interior posture. If I were to go on the, gr the ground to demonstrate this right now, I mean, leaning more, leaning more to your your chest, that would be the interior, more to your your back would be like like right here. Uh, this would be posterior. And it's again major to just just rotate those shoulder blades to make sure that they're not contracting. Uh, they're not putting a lot of stress on the thoracic and cervical vertebrae because that stress, that pressure, we don't want that. We want the tension and the smallest forms of muscle contraction as possible. But the major thing is to do is, is to fix your posture, so your posterior posture, and make sure that your, your shoulder blades are less, are less contracted and the more po protracted. I'll make sure that your lumbar vertebrae, you'll make sure that your sciatic nerve too, you'll make sure that your Contracting your glutes, your glute medius, glute minimus, glute mac maximus. You want to make sure that you're contracting all these, and you're protracting as you get down. As you get down to the squat, I'll demonstrate it uh, right here for you guys. So again, to posterior posture. So like as if I, I was just doing a regular squat, so I could like that. And the mistakes that people do is that it really doesn't. It, it contracts when it gets down here, but they just leave it there. 
it just contracts slowly, it doesn't protract, so the thing that we're going to witness is that it's not as good, and we're making our faults right there in the squat. But, again, make sure that your soleus, your gastrocnemius, is aligned with your hero, your Achilles tendon, make sure it's aligned with your quadratus lumbarum, and you want to make sure that you're in posterior posture, leaning more to your back rather than chest like that, lean more to your back instead of your chest. This is a dog walking over there. But this video is probably going to be more than 10 minutes, sorry guys, but and you want to make sure once you get down, and even if this helps, make sure that you contract and protract your iliacus and your psoas. Hip flexors, hip flexors, as we know about it. Again, I covered this, and I'll probably do another video about how to do the squat correctly. But I really just want to make sure that you guys are trying to make sure, so you can avoid surgery. Because I know surgery is it's something that many people don't want to do. And if I can give you something easier to do, so basically like straighten out your back, make sure you have good posture, contracting your glutes. Protract them too. But make sure that your lumbar vertebrae is straight and then going like this because when it's straight like that, there's more of a curve. And when there's a, a curve in that, the thing that's going to be happening is that it's going to worsen the condition. And scoliosis can it get can it go to kyphosis? Kyphosis is a 45 degree angle back. I'll be covering kyphosis then too. It's a 45 degree angle back. Can it get to that? Possibly can. That's only like 25 less than 40. Is my math correct? You guys correct me if you're like a math wizard. I'm sorry, but that is not my field of study. It should be my field of study, but I rather focus on the anatomy of the body, the bone structure of the body, the muscle structure of the body. I focus on all the health and fitness stuff for you guys. It's a family coming down there anyways, but take this advice serious and I'm moving over here for a little bit. If I can get to a Greater space. This video is probably gonna be about 20 minutes for you guys, so don't expect anything. You know that you've never seen before. I usually make my videos long, but we're gonna be sitting down for a minute. So let's recuperate with everything that we've been. My bike's right there. Anyway, so want we'll make sure that you get into posterior posture. Make sure you're not putting all the pressure that it does not need. Make sure you give it the tension. A little muscle contraction. That does need so you can strengthen it and so you can equalize it so you're not just putting the stress on your back because when you put it on your back it's all going to impact your cervical and thoracic vertebrae and your atlas which connects to your neck levator rotates the scapulae levator scapula and your coronoid hooks to the scapulae so we have to look back into the atlas we have to look back into the anatomy of the body so for scoliosis yes but you have to ultimately fix your form you have to focus on getting in posterior posture you want to focus on equalizing the tension and having no pressure at all and not making it worse for your back not contracting your shoulder blades iron on because when you contract your shoulder blades iron on it's pointing so much pressure on your spine that you don't even know about it when you force you force your spine to do so much it can't because it's literally enclosed in so and you're not even helping it in any way to heal and possibly to get back to a shape that it was at before so you want you guys want to you know take it take it slow get some rehab in there some physical therapy in there as we know about it. but this video is probably gonna be like 20 minutes or whatever the kyphos is a 45 degree angling of the back and it's more of a hunchback rather than just a, a slither a slithering snake it's a hunchback so now this kyphosis it's something that cannot be fixed it can only be fixed through surgery it's really something that you have to be precise about you have to be accurate about it's something that you need to take care of it's very hard especially if you if you're not knowledge with it what to really do because your, your spine it's it's a hunchback and the third the cervical and the thoracic vertebrae they cannot really con correctly connect so they connect out of place and what this causes is a hunchback which is the spinal 
spinal cord, and the, to the tailbone, to the spine. It's out of place and it's not in order at any time in space. So, again, with scoliosis, we'll make sure that we fix the posture, we'll make sure that we have the tension, not pressure, that doesn't even do anything but collapse it more and get it worse and put even more pressure on it so it impacts the cervical and thoracic vertebrae and gets it even more out of place that we do not need. And we don't have any problems with the sciatic nerve, we don't have any problem with the lumbar vertebrae, we don't have any problem right there. After that, you want to make sure you fix your posture, you want to get, make sure that you get in posterior posture. So if I were to go like this, it's kind of anterior posture, but we fix it like this, and this is posterior posture. Make sure that you're swinging your back, your shoulder blades, you're not really contracting, you're just keeping the tension without the pressure that is unneeded to put that further stress on them. So this is something I want to cover. I'm going to cover kyphosis 2 in this video. It's something big, big concepts that you guys, you guys have to understand. But you want to make sure that you, that you rather push your, you extend, you protract your teres major and teres minor, your teres spinal. So rather than going like that, you push it up. So your shoulder blades are less contracted. If they, if they were to go like that, they were more contracted like that. And that's something really bad because when it does, when it contracts, it, interf it interferes with the alignment of the thoracic and the cervical vertebrae of the spine. And this is not something good, especially from the tailbone. Going back to the tailbone, if we have sciatic nerve problems, the nerve sockets, if they get out of place, bulging disc, herniated disc, we get protruding disc, is not something good, and I want to make sure I covered it in this video for you guys today. Herniations are not something good. The status is not something good. Obviously, it's not something good, so I'm going to give you guys the correct information that you need to prevent these things from happening. So, again, fix your posture. Fix your posture. You want to make sure that your shoulder blades, they don't have so much, so much pressure on them. And not really. Your body is basically... Your body is relying on them, you want to equalize it so you're not getting all this pressure on the cervical and thoracic vertebrae so it doesn't leave into any further problems. Because with scoliosis, you have to be precise. It's it's again, you, but you have to grow with the process. You have to make sure that your body has what it needs and that you're not you're giving it the correct amount of time that it needs to heal, that it needs to fully form, fully extend, fully protract, protraction. Extension two with that because the thing about scoliosis is that the, the vertebrae is kind of enclosed and it's narrowed and when it's narrowed It's gonna be more compact and less than spread out and like it's supposed to be Kyphosis is a 45 degree angle back and the thing about kyphosis is that it's a hunchback So the thing about this is that it's really hard to print and you usually have to get surgery because I mean if I were to If I were just like staying down this position and like there'd be really nothing I could really do right? I mean, my spine's like that, but no, there's really nothing I can do. Because your sp thing about that is that your spine, your, your thoracic and cervical vertebrae have power over your shoulder blades. So if your shoulder blades go up, usually your spine goes up. Spine goes down, your shoulder blades go down. So it moves along with it, along with the whole core, the obliques, everything, the sciatic nerve. Spinosis, iliocostalsis, longissimus. It all moves together, so you guys need to understand the science of the body. Make sure that you're better understanding. And to make sure that none of these things are happening, bulging herniated discs, protruding discs, is that none of these, no, herniations happen. Make sure that you have good posture and you don't have good form because this is into many problems. When your lumbar, doesn't want to go up because your lumbar is meant to be in posterior posture just like this. If I were to be doing a squat, I'll do it right here. If I were to be doing a squat, if I would be doing a squat, it would be like this. And this is the correct way to do a squat. So all of you guys that focus rather on contracting and protracting are going to have no hypertrophy in your ass just to get it like that. 
So the thing that you want to do, now if I were to make this a little bit easier, I, I would take my shirt off. I'm mean, not my shirt off. Guys, I'm not going to be like Brian Secker Fitness Strips. Anyways, we're going to take that off. If I were to make this more clearer to you guys, so. I will have. Anyway, so I get down to this position right here. I get down to the position. I usually come like that. Make sure I correctly. Before the quadrace lumbar to make sure that you have good posterior posture and make sure that your hips are involved in it too. You can't be putting all the, the pressure on your legs because you have to equalize it. As you talk about it, it's going to lead to some major spinal problems. It's only major for you guys to understand. And now if, I, I'm going to do this demonstration too. So if I were, if I were like this, if I were more facing my back, so more fo facing my posterior, think about this, is that this is the better position to align, to realign your cervical and thoracic vertebrae. You guys need to understand this. It's better if you're doing it like this. I'm like, what are you, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Cause this is like, this is the area where you can track and this is literally transverse. Where only the protraction, the transverse extension is involved. So again, you wanna get like this guys, like that. You want to make sure that you straighten, straighten out your back, your muscles. Make sure they're not tense, and make sure that postural impingements are not happening. Postural impingements, popping of the shoulder blades. You want to make sure that does not happen. But again, you want to make sure that you get a good stretch because stretch is something good. Make sure that your cervical and thoracic vertebrae there's not much pressure, so you get all that pressure off it, and you have that tension, that good tension. And this is gonna fix some of your problems. And even going up here, if I were to let's demonstrate this, so. Let's say I, I would go like that. What was I gonna do? That's gonna curve your your spine. That's gonna curve your lumbar, thoracic, and cervical vertebrae to go like that way. It's meant to go like that. It's meant to pop up. It's meant to go in a corrected order. So if you do it like that, then the thing about that is that it's totally wrong. And that you really need to fix it. So it rather goes like this. So posterior posture rather than that. That puts a lot of pressure. If you're really bending that, it's gonna snap and have, and bulging disc, herniated disc, protruding disc are gonna happen, and bulging disc, and out of order, and the same thing with protruding disc, same thing with herniated disc, bulging is when they're bulging out, you can see them, protruding disc when it's protruding out of the sciatic nerve socket, and that is not something good, and bulging when it's literally bulging out, but when it's not out of the sciatic nerve socket yet, it's just bulging out and you can really see it, but protruding is protruding through the skin, it's protruding through the spine, it's protruding through the back and herniated disc. It's just when it's herniated and the disc is just out. It's literally out, you cannot get it back in. It's literally gone. It's just out of place and you cannot get it back in place. Or either you have to have surgery on this if you have any hernias, and if you've ever had any her hernias in the, in the past. So. The major thing we learned from this video is gonna put shirt is on oh, Cooper with you guys. So let's see. I'm gonna count with the also with Kai Forces too. So I'm gonna recuperate with you guys. So posterior posture, you wanna make sure that shoulder blades there's not much there's not much pressure there and especially the pressure of the shoulder blades on your thoracic and cervical vertebrae. Posterior posture that and 24 minutes of this video, it's probably gonna be done in a couple minutes. So, posterior shoulder blades make sure that they're protracting rather than contracting and a lot of pressure, tension back, and make sure that you're fixing your posture. Posterior posture. And that you're strengthening your back, your teres minor, teres mi major, and teres minor. To make sure that it has the protraction and contraction that needs to strengthen your back so that it can be equalized and your back can be strong. So, it, so the th thoracic vertebrae and cervical vertebrae are more protected by these muscles that, uh, that surround it. Going back to the tailbone, going back to 
the spine. Kyphosis is a 45 degree angle back. The thing about this is if I, if I were to demonstrate this, it'd be like this. So, I would go like this, guys. So, I mean, I would go like, let me see, let me see. This is a good image right here. So I would go like that. And what is that doing? I mean, like, that's not how your spine's supposed to be. Your spine's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be like, that's supposed to be aligned. Not, not rather than not aligning. It's just literally curving. And it's making even harder. It's affecting the spinosis, longissimus, iliolostalsis, and this is again about kyphosis. Some people uh, look like that, so you have like a hunchback, and there's so much, so much pressure. Not m so much on your shoulder blades, but there's a lot of pressure on your spine. It makes it really, really bad for your body. It's, it's not something good having kyphosis, but you cannot prevent it if you're born with this, or if you get diagnosed with kyphosis rather than premature, uh, rather early in your childhood. Think about this, and I want to make sure that I covered kyphosis and scoliosis for you guys in this video today to make sure I got my ass out there and I made sure I'm going to demonstrate some of you guys. So, spine's not supposed to be there, but it's curving. It's moving out of place the order that's supposed to be because it, then it messes up the coordination with the levator, how, how the scapulae, the levator rotates the scapulae, then it really can't do that because the spine is not really, it's not aligning correctly. So can I do that? Along with the atlas, we're going to have some problems there with the thoracic and cervical vertebrae. It's something really bad, and this is not how your lumbar is supposed to be. Lumbar is supposed to be like that, how it's supposed to be. So posterior posture. So we have that equalized t tension rather than equalized pressure on there. So... I want to make sure that I give, I give you guys a good video today. I give you guys a video that makes sense and that you can follow along. I know that many people have scoliosis and kyphosis. It's not something easy to live with. It's not. I don't have it personally, but I know some people who've, who've had it. And I mean, I mean, it's, it's really hard. So make sure that you're equalizing tension. Rather get tension than pressure to make sure that your is not dragged too much. With a more protracted, so it leaves room for your spine, your cervical vertebrae to connect to your thoracic vertebrae correctly and to not have all that pressure from the shoulder blades on the spine because they're literally right by each other. We don't understand, but they're literally right by each other. As we look at our shoulders, shoulder blades, and we look at our elbows too. Well, right there, we look at our elbows too. So I really don't look at so. I want to make sure that you guys got a good solid video done today. Now, if you have any further questions, subscribe, like, comment in the comment section below, and I'll answer any questions if you have, but nobody has commented in the comment section below yet. So, many of you guys are unfaithful. I, I do not like this stuff. I like it when you guys are faithful to me. Anyways, yeah, so, going along with Kai Fos, it's something a little bit difficult. It's something a little bit more hard to understand because not really much can we do about this and this is the one that needs to have surgery to make sure that they can realign your, your spine and it can be stopped out of order rather than connecting to your neck like like it's supposed to be your neck muscle your sternocleidomastoid sternohyoid your splenius capitis your scalene amohyde inferior amohyde superior all the the neck muscles as we talk about the scalene the scalene the splenius cavitus as we talk about the thyroid gland we talk about the thyroid we talk about serohyroid and we talk about the amohyoid and the amohyoid inferior and amohyoid superior so we talk about all that and the anatomy splenius cavitus and we talk about scalene. So if you like this video, guys, please, again, comment, subscribe. If you like my content, make sure that you hit that like button. And if you want to see any more from me, comment in the comment section below. Recommend me, suggest me some videos I can do. Because right now, I'm just out here doing strange videos. I don't know what it is, but doing strange videos. We've gotten, like, everything down in this channel, so I want to make sure... Sternohyoid.
Anyways, yeah, we had that the sternal hyoid, we had the amohyoid inferior superior, we got splenius cavitus, we got the scalene, we got the amohyoid inferior, amohyoid superior, and inferior, the thyroid. General hyoid. So we got we got all of that in the neck anatomy. So make sure you got in the atlas, especially and how and how the levator rotates the scapulae, how the coronoid hooks and attaches to the scapulae. So I want I make sure that you guys get this video done uh, to the ladies out there. Looking good, ladies. And make sure that you keep looking good because Brian Sicker cannot say that if you don't keep looking good. You gotta do it. You gotta get me on a 50-50 basis, as I would say. Kyphosis, yes. Fix your posture. And make sure you have good posterior posture. Posterior chain. Posterior relationship. Rather than the anterior, the posterior. And make sure that you make sure that, you're, that there's not a lot of stress. That there's not a lot of pressure. But rather than tension going on your spine. Because that's going to help form it back. And it's going to help muscles too along with contraction and protraction and extending and along with tightening but too much pressure is really bad because then it's like all bottled up on that one area on the th on the usually the thoracic vertebrae and the cervical vertebrae and it's it's not something new because when you have all that pressure it's going to make it even they're going to even they're going to get even more out of order this is a 31 minute video i i, I thought it needed to be a 31 minute video i mean a 30 minute I mean a long video. So I got here, I guess video. Just thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, like, comment below. Let me just cover let me see if I've covered everything in this video that I want to cover. So we're gonna sit down for a minute if we cover everything in this video that I want to cover. We're gonna end this video right now and, and go on to a second video. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna do a second video. So posture. The shoulder plates contracting rather than protracting. Make sure that we have less pressure and make sure that we have more tension. Make sure that we're equalizing it and we're strengthening it too. Get into, into posterior posture to make sure that to realign our thoracic and cervical because this is the point, it's not aligned and it's usually disconnected. And when it's disconnected, this is where we get the imbalance. This is where we get the kyphosis and scoliosis to make sure that you, you kind of realign it and it, it's hard to realign even surgery but you can re realign it a little bit make sure that it forms together and it heals together because the vertebrae they can they can heal they have the ability to heal so i want to make sure that you guys get this video solid video down today i thank you guys for sticking with me it's been a long time guys sitting out here i'm probably gonna fill all my exams tomorrow but 33 minutes a video for you guys helping you guys is more important than my education what the fuck is that? Fucking dog looking at me. I swear that bitch even goes near me Throwing out my coming at me hair <laughs> Joking I actually do I Am Goku. I am the Super Saiyan God as they know about it. We're always in the woods searching for Bigfoot Oh, sorry, guys. That's another video. Thank you guys for watching. Your loyal followers. I appreciate you. And anyways, have a good day, guys. Hope you enjoy your day. Hope you click on this video. Hope you learned some new stuff today. But ultimately, at the end of the day, I just wanted to make sure that you guys got the best information that you could possibly get. And to make sure that you got everything that you further need to further your, your knowledge. Bye, guys. Brian Sick